Hello, this is Dajwar Ali and you are watching my YouTube channel Divine Religions, Ideologies, Theories and Isms of all kinds. Today I want to discuss with you about Pan-Islamism. Pan-Islam. What is Pan-Islamism? When did it start it? And where did it end it? Or is it the era of pan-Islamism. So all we discuss here in this uh, video today. So pan-Islamism, what is, what exactly pan-Islamism is? During the time of Ottoman Empire, the Ottoman Sultan Abdul Hamid II, actually it is said that he initiated, uh, he originated this and Islamism in the Ottoman Empire in the last years, in the declining years of Ottoman Empire. It was originated in the Ottoman Empire to fight with Russia, England and British, uh, Great Britain. So pan-Islamism was originated because uh, to fight with the Western influence or to fight with the imperialistic influence uh, from the Ottoman Empire. So pan-Islamism is basically it's an advocacy or a, a way, a new method to unify the whole Muslim world or to create an environment of solidarity among the Muslims of the world. So the, this effort is called pan-Islamism. So it started in the declining years of Ottoman Empire during, especially during the tenure of Abdul Hamid II, the Ottoman Sultan. A theory of educating the unity of Muslims of the world. So it is the theory that Islamism is a theory to defend the Muslims of the world by unifying all the Muslims. And then comes The, in this way, uh, here is what is Pan-Islam. A new way of uniting Muslims. Pan-Islam is a new way of uniting all the Muslims of the world. Uh, uniting Muslims to fight Western imperialism. So this is also, we can say, that. Then comes a question comes in our mind that who founded this pan-Islamism? So the biggest name here is that uh, founder of uh, the pan-Islamism, we can say that Jamaluddin Afghani, uh, who was born in 1839 and died in 1898. He was a scholar uh, from Iran and Afghanistan. So some scholars, some writers say that he is from Iran, and some writers say that he is from Afga uh, Afghanistan, and even some writers say that he was a Shia origin, and some writers say that he is a Sunni, it was a Sunni uh, sect, but a Sunni sect or Shia sect. But uh, the aim of this person was to unite the Muslims of the world. This was common. So that's why he was not uh, disclosing his own sectarian beliefs, because he was he himself was the advocate of the uni unity of the Muslims of the world. Uh, Jamal Din Afghani, uh, he saw the the conditions of uh, the mutiny of India. Uh, he saw the situation of uh, the mutiny of India. Uh, where British subjugated the Muslim governments in the West, uh, in the Middle East, in India, in uh, other parts of the world. So this was his main uh, ambition, to liberate the Muslim world from the imperialistic powers. So he fought for this cause. Uh, he was a great scholar, a thinker, and uh, uh, an active person of pan-Islamism. 
Uh, then comes his legacy that Sheikh Muhammad Abdu. He was born in 1849 and uh, to, uh, lived to 1905. He was the student of uh, disciple of Jamaluddin Afghani. Uh, he was also an active uh, philosopher, a thinker, a journalist, and uh, a writer. So he was also an active pan Islamist. In the, uh, basically, he belonged to Egypt and uh, he supported the cause of Jamaluddin Afghani. Another one is the pan Islamist, famous pan Islamist of the Middle East is Rashid Rida. He lived from 1865 to 1922, and uh, he was um, the editor of Al Manar, a famous journal or from Egypt. Uh, he was disciple of Sheikh Muhammad Abdu, and uh, in the journal of Al Manar. He published the viewpoints, the ideas of Jamaluddin Afghani and Sheikh Muhammad Abdu. Uh, <coughs> then comes pan-Islamism in India. So the idea of pan-Islamism, it became famous in India after 1919, uh, 1919 when the British uh, Empire and French uh, France they tried to abolish the Ottoman Empire and its cal uh, caliphate. Then Muslims from India, they followed their Jamaluddin Afghani and uh, Sheikh Muhammad Abdu and Rashid Ridda. So they started a Khilafat movement. It's very famous. It's actually a pan-Islamic movement. So uh, many famous pan-Islamists were produced here in India, in the Indian subcontinent. The Muslim leaders uh, like Ali, brother, uh, Ali brothers, Mulana Shaukat Ali, Mulana Muhammad Ali Johar, and Abdul Qalam Azad, Zafar Ali Khan, and Hasrat Mohani. These people were uh, ger active journalists with their own newspapers or journals, and uh, they have good writers, they were good writers, they have good writing skills, and above all, they were pan-Islamic leaders. Uh, another leaders from Qaidazam Muhammad Ali Jannah, he was also a pan-Islamic leader. Uh, Alama Muhammad Akbal, he was also a pan-Islamic leader. Through his poetry, uh, he urged, he instigated the Muslims of the whole world to fight for their liberation from the Western imperial uh, imperialistic powers. Uh, Sir Aga Khan, he is also a pan-Islamic leader here in India. And uh, the above leaders, Ali brothers and uh, like Mo Mulan Shokat Ali and Mulan Muhammad Ali Johar. Uh, Muhammad Ali Johar published The Comrade and uh, Hamdard, two newspapers, one in Urdu and one in English. In these, through these uh, newspapers, they were fighting for the cause of pan-Islamism in the world. And uh, Abdul Qalam Azad was also a pan-Islamic pan leader, and he was publishing Al-Hilal, a newspaper. So Al-Hilal was serving the cause of pan-Islamism here in India. Uh, Zafar Ali Khan was also a famous journalist of his time. And he was publishing uh, Zamindar, a newspaper. So this, in this newspaper, he was also propagating the cause of pan-Islamism. Uh, Hasrat Mohani was also a poet as well as a journalist. Uh, he published urdu e Muallah as a magazine. And uh, he was also a good journalist. So these all leaders here in India, they fought for the cause of pan-Islamism here in India. So it started, it was started by Jamaluddin Afghani, the founder of pan-Islamism. Then came uh, Sheikh Muhammad Abdu and Rashid Rida. And this movement came in India and different leaders fought for the cause of pan-Islamism.
And um, at that time, these all leaders, they were famous in all over the Muslim world. And they attended different conferences. The conferences uh, after the abolition of uh, Khilafat in 1924, these leaders uh, arranged Muslim congresses in different regions of the world, including Europe and uh, Middle East. So they tried their level best to unite the whole Muslim world into uh, one commonwealth. And the same <laughs> effort uh, continued. And finally, in the form of OIC, Organization of Islamic Cooperation, this dream of these great leaders is yet fulfilled. But now the duties and the organizational structure of organization of OIC, uh, organization of Islamic Co uh, cooperation, is uh, struggling, but it's weak. Um, thank you for watching this lecture. Thank you.